I wanted to do a little video on what exactly is in the pan. What, what is the difference between all of these? Let's, let's dive in and take a look. This right here is mica. It's very, very tiny, tiny particles that look like this. Very, very tiny. You can barely even see them. I think this is like 60 or 70 UM. Let's see what happens when we get it wet. So I'm going to take a drop, a single drop. Oh, there we go. That's a single drop. Now you can see it spreading and going in. And it's already, it's already made this little solution. Can you see that? It's a solution already. Just a little tiny, tiny drop of water. That's what normal watercolors look like. And then they, you know, paint, paint nice. Just a simple gum Arabic solution. Because these particles are so small, this gum Arabic solution ratio is regular. It's what you'd be able to find in most watercolors. Now let's look at, at this one. What is this? This is point. 0 0.05 millimeter glitter. So these are super, super, super tiny, the tiniest particles you can get of glitter. And let's see what happens with that. So I'm going to take my same water bottle, my little dropper, and put a single drop of water. And it's going to already start sucking in. You see how it's like already, it's already getting in there. And now my glitter is loose. Look at that. Super fast, easy, quick melting of the gum arabic. Gum arabic is meant to get water to the source of the plant. It's the uh, sap that's inside of the tree. So its purpose is to attract water and suck it inside. So <clears throat> now let's take a look right here and have a sample of that. See how tiny those particles are right there super small very tiny not difficult at all for the water to get in and around the particles i don't need to use anything hard to do it the brush sort of just does that why don't i sell this why do i not offer this product because there are literally thousands of people making tiny particle glitter you can you can buy that anywhere what I don't see anywhere is what I sell, which is chunky glitter. This is Roman Shield. It's one of my favorite colors. It's like a really good copper bronze color. And you can see it's nice and hard and square, right? Can you hear that? This is what it's like when it's dry. This is gum arabic solution dried up and dehydrated over several days. I went ahead earlier and pre-wet one of those blocks and I uh, made a solution out of it and you can kind of see it's all torn up so it's it's still not dip your paintbrush into it clean but I definitely have put the water in there. And now let's look at what it looks like with the water solution. So what I did was I, I took some crumbles off of here, just let them go into that little bath of water, mix it up like a nice soup. And I use the word soup because you really need it soupy. It's, it's not gonna, unless the gum Arabic is all the way melted, it's not gonna stick on anything and it's not gonna be usable. So let me put a little bit more water in. I'm just gonna keep doing the water. And you can see how that's nice and thick. It's got a viscosity to it. All the pieces are separated and there's sort of a sheen to the liquid. 
Now earlier, I painted with it right here. And you can see the big chunks and little chunks. Right? What does it look like without the gum arabic? So this is right here. This is the mica powder. So you can see it's it's a super super fine super fine powder, right? Here's the super fine glitter. It's thinner than salt, smaller than salt particles. So you can you can see what's in there, right? Now let's look at this one. Do you see how there are very large three millimeter particles all the way down to the 0.05 millimeter particles? And what does that mean for the paint? Okay, so if we're if we're talking about in nature, what happens in nature? We can see scales, right? Scales on leopard skin or uh, lizard skin or snake skin. They sit on top of each other, and they're a moisture barrier for the skin, and nothing can get in between those. And that's kind of what we're dealing with here, because once I've made the solution and smashed it up and let it dry, this is now a, like sedimentary rock right with tiny little crevices during into which the the water can pour they can get down there to get it to be like that so how much water does it take right let's let's just do this together because i always pre-wet my my paints before a video because it can take a little while but i'm gonna do it with you right now oh and this one is here because this is one I used a couple days ago. I just set them aside and let them dry out, and it's all hard and, and dry again. But you can see the, the large 3 millimeter particles and the small 0.05 millimeter particles. So why does that make it so much different? Well, because when you've got super, super tiny particles like this, there's not much to pick up. There's, there's not an edge or it's hard to rub it off, right? It's just a, it's just a super smooth. But these guys, if you pick up the edge of one of these, it can flick off because it's it's almost like a scale or like a roof tile. You know, these particles get smooshed together and smooshed together and and then it's like impossible to get them to break apart until you add the water. Let's see what that looks like. Okay, so I'm going to add, I'm just going to add a couple drops of water and you can see what happens. One, two, three. Okay. You see how that's just sucking right up? It's just going straight into the block of, of paint. It's no longer sitting on the surface. But I don't have this. I don't have this. And that's because with a few drops of water, all that's happened is is the water's gone down inside of the tiniest particles and the spaces in between the tiniest particles. Like if you were to fill a jar with rocks and then fill that jar with gravel and then fill that jar with sand, all those different sizes of particles will let the water move in and get into those cracks. But it's still not paint. I can, I can just barely touch it. Haven't melted the gum arabic in between these layers because what we have here is these big shields standing in the way of all the, pig, the, the particles below it getting any water. So we have to break those up. So what do we do? I like to use one of these guys. This is like a nail dot tool. It's just a metal nib on the end of a wand. And let me get my water. I'm gonna drop, 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 and Break it up. Do you see how now? Look, that's one big flake of paint. What's happened here is the gum arabic has melted underneath a segment of sediment, but it hasn't turned it into paint. You're just breaking it off at this point. The gum arabic needs the water to become a paint solution. So you have to keep doing this. 
stir it up, stir it. You see how it's still just like, if I, were to, if I were to break this off and put it in here, that's a really good start. Break it off, put it in here. Now I can add more water until those particles break up. And now it's become that soupy solution like that. You see? I mean, most people use watercolors by making a palette and taking it out of the pan and adding it to a, a device like this. And then you just set it aside and let it dry again. And this will literally last for centuries. I just saw an archaeological dig that found a watercolor paint palette with gum arabic and it's still usable it's like 3000 years later still usable because it's the it's the principle of it it it's a material substance that's supposed to draw water up into the plant and in times of drought it's supposed to hold the plant together so when it's dry it's tight and that's that's what we have here so <clears throat> once you get that solution down right and you've got this lovely soupy mix It'll spread really nicely. And you can add more water to get it more thick, or less thick. But what you don't want to do is make the mistake of thinking that now that there's water on top, I've, I can just go like this and, and paint with it. No, that's just water on top. You still have to mix it together. Once the water gets mixed in, it becomes part of the solution. If you just let it sit on top, like just let the water sit on top. It's just water sitting on top with some piece of, of glitter floating on it. It's not a solution of gum arabic that's been turned into paint. It's just water on top of the gum arabic. So we really have to dig in, make it soupy like this. And then you can get these really lovely splotches of color. Why do you want any of these? Well, they're, they're all different, right? What, what tool do you pick when you're cooking? You, you use a spatula and a pan and a saucepan and a, and a you know, a oven mitt and a stirring stick and a knife. Like when you're cooking, you use so many different tools and that, that's all that these are. These are tools. So if you want a mica or super fine glitter or chunky glitter, that's up to you. But what exactly, why, why would I choose chunky glitter? Well, let's take a look at something I've made with the chunky glitter. Do you see that shine? Oh my God. This is nuclear lemon bar, I think this color is. This is a, a box that I made to hold paint. Let me open it up and show you. So on the inside, I've got more of that chunky glitter on the wall, right? And then on the outside, chunky glitter, it really fills in that space nicely. And then it just adds that variety of, of when the light touches. You've got this super tiniest little flex and then you've got these big, big pieces. And it just really makes it shine in a more organic way I think, than just a, a simple lick of one size of glitter. And the reason I sell my glitters like this is because that's I made them just because I was doing these projects and I couldn't find what I was looking for anywhere else. So I ended up making my own. And then over time, people were like, oh, that's really cool. I want some too. And now I'm starting to sell them. Or rather, I've started to sell them. So now you can see, hopefully, the difference these super, super tiny particles, the water can just get in there right away and it becomes the solution. The same thing with this 0 0.005 millimeter, but not here because what we're talking about is sedimentary layers of giant particles of glitter blocking the flow of water to get to the gum arabic that's holding them together. And it'll just look like flake until you put enough water in it that it becomes the solution. And um, you can you can do that in the pan if you if you feel uh, comfortable with that. Just make this a, like a lasagna pan of soup, you know, 
but I, I really do like to um, flake it off and put it into a um, tub and then mix it up to the right consistency that way. And then uh, it just flows perfectly. But you definitely have to have the gum arabic mixed in right. If the gum arabic is not mixed in right, you're going to have flakes that won't stick because it hasn't melted. And in order for it to stick, it has to melt. Right? And then when you're done, just set it aside and a day or two later, it'll be dry. Unless you're living in a really damp climate, like a rainforest or something. Or like Louisiana, where it's swampy. If you have any questions, please reach out to me. I'd be happy to answer them and uh, give you an idea of what might be going wrong or what you need to be doing instead of what you're doing if you can't get my paints to work right. They're really worth it.